Also keep in mind that on June 4th, uh, a date to mark on your calendar, USC fans, because Anthony Munoz will be appearing on Trojan Conquest Live with Rick and with Tim. That's Sunday, uh, June 4th. That's an 8 o'clock Eastern time show each and every Sunday, 5 Pacific time, Anthony Munoz. And this is just, you know, Matt, at this status, it's not just USC fans. It's not just even college football fans. But we're talking about one of the greatest players in the history of college and pro football. That's right. The, the two greatest Cincinnati Bengals of all time. All right. This is not hard. Anthony Munoz and Joe Burrow. That, that, that is not like you, you can say that and they're like, there's zero debate. There is no discussion. Like you're not, going with Burrow in, already. Of, of course, look at, he already's taken them to the Super Bowl and to multiple AFC championship games. Yeah. But I mean, now I would say Munoz is number one, but like if, if you're picking two and only two, like, you know, Kenny Anderson and Boomer Esiason, they split sure. Super Bowl. So like they don't have everything to themselves. Like if one of them had made, Two Super Bowls, different deal. But, you know, Joe Burrow immediately resurrecting the franchise. Anyway, like <laughs> Munoz is one of the two greatest players in an NFL franchise's entire history. And, of course, he was a national champion at USC. And, like, he has the epic sports warrior, sports hero story attached to him. You know, being hurt for a large portion of the 1979 season and then he plays through pain. He plays through great personal discomfort. And he mashes uh, Ohio State, number one Ohio State, in that 1980 Rose Bowl. He paves the way for Charles White's crowning performance as a USC Trojan. And then here's the other thing about Anthony Munoz. And, and, and I want to congratulate Tim Prangley and Rick Anaya uh, at Trojan Conquest Live for landing him. It's a great achievement, and it's a testament to – the brand and the respect that Tim and Rick have established and cultivated in a very short time here at the voice of college football. But, you know, when we talk about Anthony Munoz's story uh, and I'm sure this is going to come up in their conversation, I want to get Anthony Munoz's, uh, uh, you know, thought process on all of this is that if Anthony Munoz was uh, an NFL prospect today in the modern age, he he's like what he's a third fourth fifth round pick like we just saw Andrew Voorhees get injured uh at the scouting combine and he was a seventh round pick and we just it's the reality of the modern game the modern NFL that teams are not going to invest everything in a guy who's injured who has an injury history we saw Nicobe Dean fall what like to 82nd somewhere around there uh, last year with with Georgia, like people thought he was like a top 20, top 25 pick, but he fell into the 80s because of an injury worry. I mean, and so injury concerns, like if, when you see a guy unexpectedly fall on draft day, it's because they're worried about an injury. So Anthony Munoz's injury history and his injury profile at the end of the 1979 season, heading into the 1980 NFL draft, if observed and studied relative to modern standards and viewed through a modern lens, Munoz would be what? A hunt, number 125, number 175. You know, he would have been well down the draft board. Paul Brown, st who still ran the Cincinnati Bengals back then, takes him at number three. And by golly, like that changed the whole trajectory of the franchise. They're in the Super Bowl. One year later, after, you know, a decade of dominance by Chuck Knoll Steelers in what was then called the uh, AFC Central. So, like, Munoz being trusted by Paul Brown and, and at a time before injuries, you know, were so uh, determinative of your place on, on the draft board. Like, that's a huge part of the Anthony Munoz legend story. That that, that That's a huge part of... Uh, uh, the magical dimensions uh, of his career. And so I know that Tim and Rick are going to uh, talk uh, talk with him about that, among many other things. Of course, the 1980 Rose Bowl. Of course, the 1978 National Championship. Of course, the late, great Charles White. That's obviously going to come up there. Can't wait for that program. And it's great to know that it's on June 4th at 8 p.m. here at the Voice of College Football. I'm going to be promoting that quite a lot.
uh, at Trojans Wire and uh, just on Twitter. A number of our folks in the chat, of course, uh, chiming in with their favorite uh, Bengal selections, some with a tongue in cheek and others, uh, some legitimate uh, offerings there. Boy, Joe Burrow. I, wow. You've elevated him after two seasons, 20, no, 20, 21, 22, three seasons, three seasons at Cincinnati. Okay. Well, this isn't a Bengal show. We, we, maybe that can be one of our bonus not segments. Not at all. We'll put that on the <laughs> LSU channel. 